Hello and welcome along to my YouTube channel. This is the first ever YouTube video that I have done and today I'm going to be talking to you about my top five tips when starting out as a DJ. So I guess this is a bit of an ironic topic to be talking about. Why? Because festivals, bars, clubs, private events, every DJ event that we would normally go to has been cancelled for the time being due to an ongoing pandemic that needs no introduction. And I'm not here to talk about that, but with more people spending time at home and people having more time on their hands, this could be a great opportunity to learn a new skill or perhaps um, do something that you've never found the time to do previously. For the first time ever as well, the DJing community has pretty much been turned on its head. So every DJ in the world right now, no matter how big you are, you could be David Guetta, you could be Calvin Harris, you could be someone like me that plays a local nightclub, but we're all bedroom DJs once again. Before we continue, I'm conscious that you and I, we don't really know each other. As I mentioned, this channel is brand new and this is my first ever video. So if you've stuck around, you're probably thinking, who? Who is this guy sat there trying to give me advice on how to be a DJ? Well, my name is Carl Thomas and I have been a DJ for the past 18 years. 14 of those 18 years, I've done it consistently. And whilst I mainly play in nightclubs now, over those past 18 years, I've played at birthday parties, weddings, at private events, and even some restaurants. And I've played in some clubs in Europe. So the purpose of this YouTube channel is to help new and beginner DJs start on their journey. I want to give you open and honest advice based on my experience so you are as successful as possible. If that sounds of interest to you, please consider hitting that subscribe button, give this video a like and let's get into it. So an absolute fundamental when it comes to DJing or actually anything in life is just to start. You need to make the time to start something because ultimately if you don't start, it will never happen. It's very easy for you to make excuses for not starting something. Oh, I'm a bit busy today or yeah, I'll start it next week. Well. A day will turn into a week, a week will come into a, will turn into a month and then before you know it a month becomes a year. You need to just get it started and that is the absolute golden rule. So my first tip when starting out as a DJ is to do it for the right reasons. If you look on social media, DJ life looks amazing doesn't it? Loads of parties, unlimited supplies of alcohol, hotel rooms. However, the reality is very, very different. And if you go into it with this mindset, you're going to get a big shock very quickly. Um, I would say that whilst I do drink at some gigs, it probably makes up about 2% of all the gigs that I do. And yes, I'm guilty of, of glamorizing it and putting it on social media, but the reality is far from that. The real life of a DJ is driving often hours at a time to venues that are far away from home, missing social nights out with friends, family, because you're working on a Friday, Saturday night. You arrive at the club before everyone else. If you're a resident DJ, you're there all night. You leave after everybody else, and then there's that long drive home. So if you are doing it for the alcohol, which yes, we do have access to alcohol, if you're doing it for a party lifestyle, it's not gonna be sustainable for you. I'm not trying to put you off, that is just the reality of the work that we do. And the reason why I am a DJ and always have done it is because my absolute passion for music, entertaining a crowd and giving people a great night out. So my second tip is to be patient and to always reinvest. No DJ starts with the top of the range equipment unless you've got a lot of money to outlay first and foremost, which I probably wouldn't recommend doing. No DJ starts off with a residency in the main room of their local nightclub or with a headline slot on the Tomorrowland main stage. A lot of work goes on behind the scenes to get to that, often over many years. I remember thinking back to my first gig, I was about 13 or 14 years old it was in a local church hall. It was a kid's party. I went down there with a hi-fi. I didn't have a mixer. I didn't have proper decks. Um, it was a 
three CD hi-fi with a tape deck and I remember having to transition between a cassette, who remembers those, to CDs. I couldn't mix properly. It was awful thinking back and uh, you couldn't even hear the music over the kids because I didn't have proper speakers. And for disco lights, I had Christmas lights. That was my first gig. Um, but I used the money that I gained from those really awful gigs and a paper round that I had at the time, reinvested into equipment, reinvested in music. Uh, my first gig in a nightclub was a warm-up slot. I played to absolutely no people. And I think you have to be prepared to take kind of the rough with the smooth. You have to be prepared to play those gigs that you wouldn't necessarily want to play in order to progress and get the gigs that you want to do further down the line. So tip number three is stop caring about what other people think. And I think this goes for pretty much anything because if you listen to the noises that are coming out of people's mouths, then it's never gonna help you to achieve what you want to achieve. And I've heard it all before. Even close friends and family members have said to me in the past, oh, you're gonna be replaced by an iPod soon. Or what's the point in being a DJ? You're just stood there playing other people's records. It's not a proper job, all of this. But actually, when I think about it, if I listened to those people, would I have been a DJ and made consistent revenue from it? Probably not. And ultimately, people that are negative about things usually are compensating for something that's not going right in their own life. So just be yourself, do you, and do what's right for you. Tip number four is all about networking. It is so, so important as a DJ to try and grow your network. I would say half of the gigs that I've done have been through connections and from knowing other DJs. Now, it's gonna be quite uncomfortable to start with, so I would recommend starting off small. For example, you could make a mix, post this online, share this with your friends who are already your network, who like your style of music, they could share with their friends, and your network could grow from there. Also, speak to other DJs. This is really, really important, and I don't know why DJs don't really talk to each other more. Um, the comment section here could be a good place to start with myself, hint, hint. The only advice I would say is be cautious and network at the right times. Tapping a DJ mid-set in a nightclub, asking for a mix when you're five beers down is probably not going to earn you many brownie points. But asking them questions after their set or um, you know, dropping them a message on social media, absolutely, go for it and try to build your network that way. The more doors you knock on, the more likely one is to open. And you never know when that DJ needs a night off or they arrive at the venue late and they need a warm up DJ, you could be first in line. And tip number five is all about having fun. We work in the music industry, we work to entertain other people on their night out and create memorable experiences for them. That sounds a bit Disney, but it's kind of true. So have fun with it. That is the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing if you like this type of content. Drop me a comment below and links in the description for all of my social channels. See you in the next one.